So now we have this thing and hopefully it is scoped to Spellbook. So let's create a new file. Hit this little button right here. New file, index.html. And I'm gonna make two more files, index.css and index.js. So in index.html, by the way, you can hide and show the sidebar in code with command B or control B, which I'm going to do quite a bit just because if I'm not actually using the sidebar, there's not that much space up here. So I'm gonna do that. So inside index.html, just type HTML. And you should get some autocomplete options, one of which should say simple HTML5 starting point. So choose that one and hit enter. And it just creates a whole HTML document. Again, just type HTML and you should get some autocomplete suggestions, one of which when you highlight it says simple HTML5 starting point. And it'll even highlight the title for you. So let's change the title right off the bat. It even creates a link to a style sheet and to JavaScript, but we wanna change those because we didn't name our files that. So where it says main.css on line eight, change that to index.css. Where it says main.js on line nine, let's change that to index.js. And we're gonna do something else with the JS too. Let's take that script tag Let's move it out of the head of the document and to the very bottom of the body, right before the closing body tag. Anybody know why we do this? So it loads after the page. If the first thing we do inside our JavaScript is grab an element off the page, and then uh, if it hasn't rendered yet, if that runs too quickly, it's going to have an error because nothing is, on the, nothing is in the DOM yet. So we put it at the end of the body so that everything is already loaded. And that's just fine. So we want to see if this worked. So let's go ahead and put something in the body. Let's just put an H1. Let's say spellbook. By the way, I used a little trick there. You may notice if you actually use the angle brackets and stuff, you say angle bracket H1, angle bracket, it'll put the closing tag in for you automatically. But there's an even easier way. I just typed H1. And again, you should get autocomplete options. The first one I get is Emmet abbreviation. Most of the time, that's the one you'll get. Choose that, do that. Um, but if you look at the website under tools, under key bindings, I have a special keyboard shortcut command spacebar for doing that thing because for some things, it's not the default suggestion and I wanna move quickly, so I have a separate keyboard shortcut for it. So anyway, I say H1, I expand it, I get an H1. And the cursor is right there in between. So let's just say, spellbook, why not? And let's see how that looks. Did I close this? I closed it because I and what you call a doofus. I want to make sure we do it the same way we did it in the morning. Cool. So now we've got an H1 in there. It's time to see how this works in our browser. Now, unfortunately, in uh, this VS, VS Code extensions section, I told you to install something called view in browser. Well, that extension doesn't work anymore. There's another one called open in browser that totally works, but that's okay. It's not hard to do anyway. So what we're going to do is go to the command line, make sure you're still in that folder. And this command is different on Mac and windows. So on Mac, I'll just say open space index.html and I'll type, I'll autocomplete index to make sure I'm in the right folder. Yep. Open index.html. And that should open a new tab in my default browser. On Windows, the command is start. 
index.html. Open index.html on Mac, start index.html on Windows. And it should open it in your default browser. And if that happens not to be Chrome, just copy and paste the URL out of there and paste it into Chrome. You might make it your default for the next three weeks, even if it's not what you usually use. Yes, then that's another thing to point out. Yeah. So look, if you haven't saved a file, Visual Studio Code will show a dot right there, right where the close button is. You'll see a dot. That means you haven't saved. I promise it will happen to you at some point over the next three weeks. You've made a bunch of changes. You're refreshing the browser like mad, and you just don't see them. You know you have exactly what I typed, and it's just not working. Make sure you've saved. It's the first thing to check. All right. I see my H1, so it must have worked. Now, let's open one of our many new best friends, the JavaScript console, our developer tools. Again, different shortcut on Mac and Windows. On Mac, it is Option Command J. On Windows, it is Shift Control J. Do it a few times, try to get it under your fingers, we'll be using it a lot. If you can't find it, I mean, if you can't remember it ever, just do this. Here's an easy way to get to your developer tools. Just right click on the page and say inspect. Now it'll open your developer tools to the elements tab. Console is right next to it. Elements is also super useful. So again, option command J, Mac, shift control J on Windows, or just inspect, yeah. Uh, it goes to I goes to the inspect the elements tab the inspector, oh. J goes to the console tab. So they both open developer tools. They just open a different tab. Yeah, I I for inspect. Yeah, and the same goes for Mac. I instead of J opens opens the elements tab. All right, so. We actually want to switch to a different tab in our developer tools. We want to switch to the Sources tab. So there's another tab called Sources. And if it's all, if it's all right, we'll see all three files there, index, HTML, JS, and CSS. If you don't see one of them, then your link tags are wrong. So double check line eight with link, make sure it says index CSS, and make sure the file actually exists, and make sure index.js is there. Then just to be darn sure that our JavaScript file is working, I'm going to actually open up index.js and I'm going to put one line of JavaScript in there. I'll say console.log testing. Make sure I'm on my console, refresh the page, and I see testing, so it worked. Console.log is non-standard, but it does work in every browser. It's just not implemented quite the same way in every browser. But generally speaking, console log and a string is going to work fine in any browser. But it is not actually a standard part of ECMAScript. Now in the console, you can also just type some JavaScript and have it work. Uh-oh, I got undefined there. Is that bad? No, it's fine. Assignment, assignment in JavaScript always returns undefined, not the value that you assigned, so don't freak out. It's fine. If I look at x, x is 4. It's cool. And both on your terminal and in here, if you want to clear the console, Command K or either Control K or Control L on Windows. I can't remember. It might have to be L. But Command K on Mac clears your console in case it gets messy. It's Control-L, okay. Command-K on Mac, Control-L on Windows. Yeah. Or clear with an L as the second letter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
like modify what's on the page to see if it's happening. Huh? You can modify what's on the page. You can. Page. Yep. Now, when you refresh the page, of course, it'll be gone. But yeah, to demonstrate, yeah, we can totally say document dot query selector h1. Save that to a variable. Let h1 equal that, whatever. It'll say undefined, but then if I say h1, I see that it says spellbook there. And watch this. This part's really cool. If I move my mouse over it, it actually highlights it on the page. So I know for sure this is that h1. That's a lonely H1. How about we give it a button to hang out with? Yeah. <laughs> Let's make a button. Let's label it change text. Don't forget to save. Refresh the page. Hey, there's our button. That doesn't do a darn thing. Seems like it ought to do a darn thing. It also seems like you have enough power at your fingertips to do it yourself. But before we do that, we should probably put this stuff on the GitHub. So we'll do that next. <laughs>